If you're looking for help running shopping ads on platforms like Google Ads, Bing Ads, or Facebook's dynamic product remarketing ads, this is the video to get you started. I'll show you how to complete the first step in publishing shopping ads on those advertising channels by creating your product feed. If you've been struggling with creating your product feed, then don't worry, I'll explain the process step by step for you in this video. All right, let's get started. So first of all, what is a product data feed? Well, a product data feed is a list of clean product data, including things like the product's price, a product picture, a link to the URL where the product can be purchased, and much more. So to publish product ads on various sales channels, uh, like Google or Bing, you must assemble all that product data into a clean and organized feed. The ad channel can then view and approve that feed that you've created with your organized product data and then publish it into live ads. So there's a few steps involved there, but you can think of it like this. To start, you have product data on your store. So perhaps you've got a Shopify or a big commerce store and you download that data into a product feed, which could be something as simple as a Google Sheets spreadsheet or a CSV file. Once you have that data cleaned up and ready to go in your data feed, you'll send that to a channel like Google Merchant Center or to your Facebook um, commerce account where the product data is reviewed by Google or Facebook or whatever platform it is. And in that step, they can make sure that you're selling products that are um, that fit their requirements, that are uh, not disallowed product categories like uh, weapons or something like that. And then once that product data is reviewed and approved by the channel, at that point, you can finally show your product data in ads, like this sample ad I've got here for a pair of red shoes. You can see there's a picture, a product title, a price, and then some other data down below. So this is what we're going to work on first today. And what I'm going to use for an example is this store, Kush Cushion, which is a Shopify store that sells these little seat cushions that go on top of a bar stool like this. So we're gonna use this store for a couple demonstrations. And in fact, later in this video series, I'll actually show you how I set up and manage and optimize live ads for this live store. So if you wanna catch those videos as I release them on how I'm actually optimizing and managing live ads for a real store, make sure to uh, follow our channel so that you can be notified when we publish those videos. So, all right, so to get started, I'm going to create the product feed. At my marketing agency, we use Data Feed Watch, and Data Feed Watch is a paid feed tool. You can use a different tool if you'd like. So here, let's just go there. So you can use a free tool like a Google Sheets if you'd like, or there's other plenty of other um, product feed tools. If you're on Shopify, you can use the Shopify free app. So it's the Shopify, I think it's the Google Shopping app. And this one's free. So you can use this too, but we use Data Feed Watch at my agency. It's not that expensive. In fact, I think it's really cheap for all that you can do with it. And if you use our referral code, uh, for which we get a small kickback that's in the description below, you can get a double length free trial with Data Feed Watch. So instead of a 15 day free trial, you can get a 30 day free trial if you use our link below. So I'm going to use Data Feed Watch in this example, but again, you can use different tools if you'd like. So, so I'm going to go into the back end of this Shopify shop and I'm gonna search for Data Feed Watch. Oh, in fact, I think I've already installed it. If you hadn't already installed it, um, what you would do is sign up for a Data Feed Watch account, go, but let's see, you'd have a screen something like this. I have a lot of stores in this Data Feed Watch account already. Um, but I would just hit add shop, type in the shop's name, and then I would take the Shopify. If I'm if you're using Shopify, you'll you'll do this. You'll grab the actually sorry, it's just this, the Shopify URL and add that here. Okay, but I've already done that, so I've got the shop ready to go in data feed watch. So I'm just gonna leave this. And I'm gonna hit next. And then these are all settings that you can adjust. Um, Set your time zone, of course, so let's see. I'm just gonna leave this one as UTC because that's actually easier for me, working multiple time zones. And then you can add another update. This is how many times Data Feed Watch downloads the data from your shop, um, and I don't need it more than once. I'm just gonna let it download once, which is at 1512 UTC. And then you can change these product um, drop settings as well, which is if, for example, you lose more than half of the products in your store, Data Feed Watch will 
keep them live and email you, but these are settings you can consider and change for yourself later. Okay, so now at this point, State of Watch is downloading all the product data from this Shopify shop. And once it's done, I'll come back and I'll start setting up the feed here. While we're waiting for this to download, I'll show you briefly how to set up the feed using just a free Google Sheets template. So to do that, I'll go to the Merchant Center account. And I'm assuming in this video that you've already set up a Google Merchant Center account. If you haven't, set that up and then come back and then you can follow from there. So I'm at merchants.google.com, I'm in the overview, but now I'm gonna go down to products, feeds, and there is a feed already, but we'll just ignore that. Um, I'll hit the blue plus button, add a primary feed, and then I'll add the target country, which will be the United States for us today, and then the language will be English. And then I wanna leave free listings and shopping ads on. The free listings are listings that show up in unpaid image results on um, Google Images or in other results across the web where Google will, sur will surface an image that's from a product page that also has shopping data like price, the ability to check out and order the product that's in the picture. Anyway, you'll want to leave that on. And then, of course, we'll leave shopping ads on. Hit continue. I'm going to call this draft Google Sheets template. And then I'm going to just leave the Google Sheets radial icon ticked. And then now we're going to generate a new Google spreadsheet from a template. So I'll just hit create feed and then Google will very nicely just open up a um, spreadsheet for me. Okay, so I'll access the Google Sheet. Now it'll open it. And here I can see some instructions on how to fill out the pieces of product data here. Um, but I'm just going to remove these for, for this example, but you should definitely check out these two links if you've never done this before. But I'll show you a really brief version of what you're going to do. So let's say I'm filling this out for this store, um, Kush Cushion. What I would do is go to the product pages. So let me go to this button and then I'll select this product. Let's say I want this product. So I'll take the um, product URL and I'll drop that in here in the link section and then I'll take all these other pieces of data and I'll drop them in where they belong so this will take a while and you can see why it's nice to use a feed tool like data feed watch to save time doing this type of work so let me just quickly fill this out Okay, then last, I filled out most of the product data, but I'm going to show you where to get one last piece, which is the product ID. And you can really make up a product ID, but for Shopify, it's best to take the product um, variant ID, which is right here. And so just to show that again, I did right click, view page source, control F or, or command F on a Mac, search for var meta, and then it's always this ID number after where you see variants, and then some brackets ID. It's always that number. So I'll drop that in. Okay, so I'm not gonna fill this out for the rest of the products because it'll take too long, but this is how you would do that if you wanted to use the free manual method. And then once you're done, you just hit fetch now, and you'll see the data come in here. It can take a while, so be patient, but... Okay, so that aside, I'm gonna go back to the data fee watch method and I can see now that the products are ready they've been downloaded so I'll hit continue and then here I'll start setting up internal fields for my shop in data feed watch and it's helpful to understand at the outset that there's two types of fields in here there's internal fields which are fields from the shop so for example I've got my title field here and I'll just hit preview so you can see it. So here's some of the product titles, and here's the different product IDs. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this field um, titles, and I'm matching it to the internal field title. And so you can see I could actually change this and use something else. So let's just, for example, I'll assign the Shopify field vendor to title, and then I'll hit preview, and you can see that's 
this wouldn't work because this is the vendor name Kush Cushion, but I'm assigning it to the um, data feed watch field title. So I don't want to do that. So I'll go back to title and then I'll go through the rest of these and just change some things a little bit according to how I want them. Okay, good. And so I'm done with this now. And before I proceed, I can preview some of these fields. So I'll preview the URL and I'll just, for example, take a look at that one. I'll paste it into another tab to see that it goes to the right product. And that's right. So, okay. So I'm done with this. So I'll hit finish. And now I'm finished setting the internal fields to what I want them to be. And so now what I'll do is I'll actually set up a channel which in data if you watch a channel would be something like Google um, or Facebook or Bing. So let's do Google first. Google, whoops, Google. And then I want Google shopping ads. And then I'm gonna put in the website. So I want that. And this can be left empty. I don't actually need that. And then I'll just leave the display name Google Shopping. This will be the name of the channel within Data Feed Watch. Okay, and now I'm going to step back. I'm in the Google Shopping channel, but I'll step back just to explain something. So you can see I have internal fields, which is what I just set up. That's back here. But I'm done with these now. So now the next step was to make channels. So now I've got a Google Shopping channel. And at this point, what I'll do is I'll take those internal fields and I'll map them to specific Google Shopping ad channels. So Data Feed Watch does this for you. It starts by just assigning the title to the title, the description to the description, the link to the link, and so on. And for the most part, this is done. There's just a few things that I want to change. So for example, I don't want to include a GTIN because for this store, we don't have UPC or barcodes ready. And that's okay because they're actually not required in every case. They usually are, but in this case, this is a special case, so I won't have to include those, and that's a whole different subject um, for another video, but I won't include those for now. So I'll just do leave blank, or leave empty, and then I'm gonna set identifier exists to false because I haven't submitted a, a GTIN. Okay, so the rest of these are good. I'm just gonna hit preview on a couple of them. So this is the sale price, and that's what I expect. Um, and then there's, of course, some other things I could do here to fill this out and make it look better. So for example, all the titles are the same. And ideally, I'll make these different by adding more information like the size. So this one I could put um, rounded plus some more information in the title about what type of chair it fits. So for example, I could put this in the title. But that's uh, a bit of a project I'm not going to do just now. So I'll hit Save and Proceed. And then the next step is to include or exclude certain products. I'm going to exclude some products. So I'll do exclude only if title includes gift card or if the image, let's see, link. Oh, no, I want to do if the internal field image link is blank. And then I'll also do one more. That's if the price, I'm going to do the input field in this case. So if the price is equal to zero. Sometimes this happens in, in stores where there's a couple stray products that are gift cards or zero price products or old products that don't have an image anymore. And those won't be accepted into the feed. And I wouldn't want to try to advertise them anyway. So I'll just exclude those if they exist. And then the last step is to categorize the products. And Google will automatically categorize them if I leave this blank. But I should put a default category in. And so what I'll do is I'll actually, I'll just Google um, Google's product taxonomy. And this is where I can find a list of all the different, these are all different um, categories that can be assigned to your products in Merchant Center. And so I'll try to find one that would fit this. So let's see. Okay, so this is probably the best category that I'm gonna find. This product is, it's associated with furniture. It's a furniture accessory. It seems to me like an office accessory because these chairs are usually not found in homes and it's an office chair accessory. So I'm gonna choose this as the product category that I'll put in here as the default category. And I'll just click that so that it appears here as a little blue box and then I'll hit save and continue or save and proceed. And then the last step is for merchant or uh, data feed watch to review the feed. So I'll wait for this and then I'll come back and start again. Okay, so it finished and I don't have any products in my feed and that's because I made a little mistake here. So I'll go back and show you what I did. 
So I'll go to channel mapping, and then I'll go back to the include exclude products. So here I chose the run option. These take some getting used to, so I put image link is not blank, which means there is an image available. So I want to switch this to image link is blank, meaning there's no image available. So now I'll hit um, actually preview at this point to make sure I didn't do that again. And I can see a bunch of included products. So that's perfect. So now I'll hit save and proceed again. And then I'll click past the categorized products. And then I'll wait for this product review uh, one more time to make sure that there's no errors in the feed. All right, so now the feed is done. And I've got uh, some tips here from um, Data Feed Watch, and the one that they're giving me is to fill out the G10, which is the UPC code, but again, I don't have those for this product. And so what I'll do is I'll just take the feed URL, and then I'll copy it, and then I'll go back to Data Feed, or to Merchant Center, and then I'll go back to Feeds, and then I'll hit Plus, and then I'll hit, um, I'll fill this out again like I did before. So this is United. And then I'll put scheduled fetch on this one. And I'm actually going to name it data feed watch underscore the country code. You can name it whatever you'd like, but I'll do that. Hit continue. And with data feed watch, you have to take the, let's see if I can show you. You have to take the product or the file name, which is everything after the last backslash. So I'll copy just that. And that's what you enter here under file name. So again, it's just everything after the last backslash, which is um, starting with F, D, C, B. And so that's this. OK, so I've got that. Now I'll take the whole thing, which is the file URL, and I'll paste that there. And you'll see I'm leaving that whole file name, starting with F, D, C, B. So leave that all in there. Just take everything and paste it in file URL. And then the time zone, I'm going to put this in my time zone because that's where this store is located. So I'm in Eastern. And then I'll hit Create Feed. I don't need to fill this out because this is not behind a password-protected um, login wall. So I'll just hit Create Feed. And then I'll hit Fetch Now. And so now the product data will start uploading into Merchant Center. So that's all it takes to submit your product data to Google Ads. And the next step is to create ad campaigns in Google Ads, and that's what I'll show you how to do in the next video. Later in the series, you'll also be able to watch me manage and optimize Google, Amazon, and Microsoft ads for this live Shopify store. So please make sure to like this video and follow our channel if you'd like to see those videos as they're released. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.